last time Ryan Ocal Callahan and I were hanging out in Hawaii, we introduced you to these two right here, Danny Bolton and Kimmy Werner, Hawaii-born fanatics for all things outdoor adventure. I thought of, you are not a hunter, you are just a thing drifting. With their guidance, we got an incredible introduction to just some of what the tropical waters of the South Pacific have to offer. We just passed a barrel. It has every fish in the ocean, every fish in the ocean hanging out on it. For this trip, we're going deeper, as in way deeper, in pursuit of open water pelagic species such as mahi and yellowfin tuna. In these waters, the food is top shelf. As for the food chain, folks ain't on top. You guys wanna go big? Let's go big. Right ahead, there you go. You got it. Perfect. Holy <laughs> That is wild, man. Okay for days. I've followed trails of all kinds pursuing wild game through our country's wildest places. These are my stories. There he's out. These are my people. <laughs> I'm Steven Ranella, and this is Meat Eater. We're just scoring on weather right now. Like, the winds are gonna be really nice for the next few days. What we're gonna do is we're gonna like be taking dives like maybe 15 feet, 30 at the max, just to get under enough because you'll be able to see better. You'll be Got able it. to see more by looking up and around. Like when you're on the surface, you can only see so far. Yeah. When you go a little bit under the surface and you scan that way, you can see what's on the surface a lot more. If you see a fish, what I like to do is grab the bait fish and just throw it. Just like stick your head out of the water and throw this fish. Oh, I was going to say, I, I've never thrown a fish underwater. No, you want to throw it out of water. It's mostly in the wrist. <laughs> yeah. You're going to throw it because that fish is going to make a splash. Yep. That's going to get the big fish's attention. Now it's a lot easier to swim at your fish because you're just another predator going after that bait fish is what you're going to yeah. tell yourself, right? Yeah. And you're going to let them win the race. You're going to be competition. Yes, and you're going slow. You don't want to push them off it, right? But you want to be interested in it. Last year, my buddy Cal introduced me to two of his Hawaiian friends who shared with us a taste of the fishing that can be found off Hawaii's Kona coast. First, Danny Bolton, a prolific hunter and angler, took us rod and reel fishing for gray snapper, which the Hawaiians call uku, plus wahoo, which they refer to as ono. Then, Kimmy Werner, a national champion spearfisher and all-around ray of sunshine, got us into a big handful of reef fish using both pole spears and spear guns. As much as we did during that trip, Cal and I left feeling like we hadn't even scratched the surface. As soon as we got home, we were plotting and figuring with Danny and Kimmy about all the things we'd do on our return. Chiefly among those things was going deeper and bigger. Finally, it all came together, and the four of us were once again headed out to sea. Our plan today is to post up at a few government-installed buoys known as FADs, or fish aggregating devices. Pelagic fish, fish that populate the surface area of the open ocean as opposed to the shallow reefs or bottoms, love to congregate around anything sizable that might be floating near the surface. Driftwood, seaweed, select pieces of trash, even big jellyfish. When conditions are right, these objects collect species both large and small, creating mini ecosystems. Everything is gathered up, hiding from each other and eating each other in an orgy of life. As a kid who grew up along the shores of a lake that was 22 feet deep in the middle, the depths here are hard to imagine. We're in 600 fathoms of water, a fathom being six feet. So that's about three quarters of a mile deep. Just close your eyes for a moment and think of how long it would take your corpse to slowly fall that far. Well, scratch that, don't think about that. Lay out for me what we might expect to see here. Probably see some sharks. Yeah. Most likely going to see oceanic white tips would probably be the most common. And, and that's a sizable shark. It can be. Yeah. Some of them can be three, four feet. 
Okay. And they're going to be a little bit more curious. The smaller they are sometimes, but even the bigger ones, which, yeah, they can get eight feet, but we'll probably, they stick around that like five, six foot range. Yeah. They can be pretty sporadic. They can um, definitely close a gap really quickly. So even if they seem calm and cruising, they're definitely a fish you don't want to get complacent with. Okay. Keep your eye on them. So what's your general attitude toward them? Whatever their attitude is towards me, Got I it. just match it. If they're cruising, you cruise. If, they're, if they start swimming up to you and getting a little interested in you, you have to show that same interest back in them. Got face it. them head on, hold your ground. Yep. For the most part, We'll try kind of defend our catch. If they do get a hold of it, they get a hold of it. It is what it is. But and once they get a bite in, it's, it's over. Yeah, and expect those sharks' aggression to kind of go up during that feeding frenzy mode. When we first get in the water, they're going to come check you out and swim right by you. OK, that's cool. But as soon as they're eating something like that, you don't want to be like too complacent when they're that close, you know? Yeah. OK. So sharks. Sharks. What about game fish? Yeah, what can so, we eat yeah, down so there? Exactly. So my mice is what we're shooting for, right? Like, that's yep. the goal. They're kind of thin, kind of narrow, so they're easy to get a shaft through. They can get real curious. Don't take a super long shot. OK. And then the Ono, the Wahoo. Yep, and Onos, you'll see And they'll them. keep their distance. They may come in. Mm -hmm. Like, they, they'll get curious. Usually, the mahis kind of hang at the surface. Yep. And then these Onos will come in. You'll see them on the surface occasionally, but usually they're kind of down a little bit deeper. And then you mentioned a trigger fish. Oh, yeah, hoggies. And those are good. Yeah, you can eat them. I mean, I don't eat a ton of them, but <laughs> yeah, I've, I've heard they're good. Like you go, to Baja, good. you go to Baja and yeah. people live off trigger fish. Yeah. What the hell's with that? You can shoot as many trigger fish as you want because yeah. they eat all the chum and they scare the other fish away. So I'll be happy if you just start shooting trigger fish. So. You're going to see a lot of them. Yeah. Like if you want to shoot trigger fish, you can shoot them all day here. Obviously, like we're not going to be diving to the bottom and hanging out on the bottom and being real still, right? Yeah. Typically on the surface, it's a lot of movement. So if you can just get down a little bit, it's going to be a little bit calmer for you to be able to make your shot. Just at all times, think to yourself, Steve doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs>
So when Kimmy does shoot our first Ono, she encounters a bit of competition. Now that I've seen the target species, the biggest thing that blew my mind is I didn't know they would ever go that slowly. Mm. Yeah. The thing about Onos, I didn't tell you, it's just if you shoot behind these two fins to the tail, it's a holding shot just about always. Okay. And so basically, assuming away, I'm like, no, I'm not going to let it go with it. I'm going to shoot it in the tail. Shot it in the tail, was stoked. I was telling Steve, like, reload as fast as you can because the other Ono was sticking around with it. But then out of nowhere, the big Oceanic just came Did and in him? one bite. He was with us. One shot. bite. He was cruising with us. And then all of a sudden, I seen him boop out of there yeah. and right towards you guys. And I was like, <laughs> they got something. And then I was just like pulling this thing out of the water on my shaft oh, like yeah. this the whole Try time. Getting the rest. Well, we still got some good sashimi. We yep. just had to pay the tax, man. You, you know? gotta go do this drift again. Yeah, let's yep. keep going. Next time you shoot the trigger fish. Man. <laughs> okay, <laughs> deal. Oh, so exciting. After a break, as we're getting ready to hop back in, we notice a pod of pilot whales has moved in to check out the action at the fan. We gotta hold off because those guys are here. There's some concern for safety here, which I had no idea about, because these things have been known on occasion to play a little rough with humans, even grabbing them and pulling them down to the depths for a good rupturing of the eardrums before letting them go. But ultimately, we decide we'll be just fine. You just gotta pay attention. The people that got bit are like basically trying to pet them. I got a dog at home. Turns out we're more than just fine. Pilot whales love to prey on mahis, and that big bull mahi seems to know this fact well. He's got himself plastered to the buoy for protection. Kimmy beckons me over and tells me not to dive or make any sudden movements, and definitely don't do anything whale-like, such as diving. Just drift like a log, slowly, only kicking one foot when the fish is behind the buoy and can't see me. scared I was mine about these whales, he's just hugging that buoy. Yeah. And Kimmy's like, don't dive, go toward him, try to kick when he's behind the buoy. And so I just like kick a little bit. And I kept being like, he's gonna leave, he's gonna leave. Just kept that buoy. That is one hell of a first monkey. I'm gonna have a nice monkey for Hawaii. That was amazing. You did it perfectly. See him just hugging around that thing? Yeah. I was just like, you know what? There's pilot whales everywhere. It's their main predator. He's scared. He's using the buoy as protection. That's why he's doing those tight circles. But if anybody dies, you're going to act like a pilot whale. Mm -hmm. He said, yeah. act like a drift lock. I'm like, you are, you are not. I, I thought of, you are not a hunter. You are not a pilot whale. You are just a thing drifting, a thing drifting. That's all you're doing. You're just going to drift into that buoy and follow his circles. Dang, man. Beautiful fish, team. That was just so perfect. That was just perfectly executed. For our final dive of the day in yet another spot, we get curious. I was asking Kimmy if pilot fish were any good to eat, and Kimmy had to admit that she didn't know the answer to that. We decide to put the mystery to rest, and I break out the three prong to see if I can manage to pluck one off a shark. Thank you. 
After a couple of really close calls, no! Kimmy steps in to take a crack at it. And, of course. With that, we call it a day. Got up early as hell. Yes. And we're gonna try to get out where we're going at the cold break of dawn. Exactly. And there's a possibility to catch a tuna on a rod and reel. Yeah. Right, they like daybreak. Yeah, right at daybreak. Cause they haven't gone time. down yet. Yeah, exactly. I've never been on a boat to see like a big tuna come on a boat. Wow. Today, I don't know. I don't get your hopes up. A tuna is always a kind of a unicorn. I feel like you can't really yeah. guarantee a tuna. We have the right tools on board and we're going to a place where they live. So I don't expect it just because I don't like to get my hopes up. But like, if we don't catch, I'm gonna be bummed. Oh. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. I'll expect it for you, Danny. Yeah. <laughs> This is a trolling setup, right? So we're trolling a bait way out the back of the boat. It's high to the surface where these fish are feeding up. And there's a switch on these things that have a little tick, 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 tick. So when a fish drags that thing, you can hear these reels go off. Super fun, very addictive. Oh, this one's on right here. I'm really regretting this poncho. <laughs> you want me to crank for a little bit? Steve, you want to gaff it? Yep. Oh my god, that's a nice tuna. Let the head come right to here, you. Right here, just get him. Right in the head. There you go. You got it. Perfect, perfect. Holy perfect. Hold him right there. Okay. Oh, that's Okay for days. Good job. You did the hard work. Bulky for days. That is wild, man. There it is. What a stout fish. Oh, yeah, it's just a stick of muscle. Seeing 30 or 40 pounds of ahi tuna hauled into the boat in one package makes me think of all those times I've paid 20 or 30 bucks for a dinky little serving. Now I'm having visions of tuna gluttony. And then another reel screams. Oh, oh, no. oh my God. And we're double right here. Put me in, coach. Let me know how you doing, Kimmy. Okay. Holy cow. Get it. <laughs> Let it know who's boss. Oh it's right there. You got it, you got it, you got it. Don't want to say a stat that I know about oh, tuna. Oh, we just right there. Yep. Is that 90% sure. of tuna lost or lost boat side? We just ripped his lips. OK, Steve, you're our last hope. Got it, got it, got it. Get in the back. Get it in the boat. In the boat. Right, oh, Easy. Nice work, oh, pal. What's in there, Cal? Bunch of little fish, bunch of squid. Pretty small baits. Yeah, like eating little dinky squids, man. Pretty big heart. Look at his heart still beating, dog. Yeah. Take a bite. There you go. About like you'd expect, pretty irony. So these are firmly in the she -bee class. We got she -bees, yeah. Anything less than 100 pounds, we call it a shibi, and anything over, we call it an ahi. 100 pounds or over, then you can legitimately call them an ahi. All right, so your, your tourist sport fisher folks are like, oh, we caught ahi tuna. Yeah, but everybody's like, like, well, they're shibi. How big? And they're like, 20 pounds. They're like, 
He's all about tuna, no matter what. Yeah. But Fisherman Sanders here, she beat Mahi. Satisfied with our tuna haul, we set out for our intended dive spot. But instead, we stumble into an incredible piece of luck. We just passed by the barrel floating, and it has every fish in the ocean. Every fish in the ocean hanging out on it. Here's this discarded plastic 55-gallon drum that looks like someone opened it with an axe, just minding its own business out in the ocean, and it's got schools of a dozen or so species of fish flocking around it or in it like some mystical attractant. As soon as we jump in, there's a school of mahi. I get one right off. The rest of the school is still trying to figure out what happened, and Kimmy swoops in. Soon after, Danny picks up a third. Couldn't ask for a better day right now. Caught the tuna this morning and loving it. The next thing we know, now there's a bunch of Ono in here. We've got Ono cruising in and out of our zone. Cal gets in there and nails one. Redemption. learned what an Ono was last year. I screwed up that first Ono that I had a shot at this trip because he was swimming right at me and I stopped and let him kind of close the distance instead of swimming right at him. Nice one, bro. This one was doing the same thing but I kept swimming at him and smoked him. Now, it's not that I'm jealous of Cal, but his success on Ono reminds me that one of my personal goals was to get one with a spear gun, and I might live the rest of my life without seeing another situation as good as this. When a few come through, I track one down. It's not a great hit, but as always, Kimmy's there to help me out and secures the fish with a backup shot. A shark tries to ruin our good times. But he's not entirely committed. He backs off. So gorgeous looking. Right. Man, you guys got it made on the fish. Man. Oh, doesn't not even comparable. We're sitting around the bait, yeah. you like perch or bluegills right. better. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a ridiculous amount of fish to mess with, and we're gonna make several different dishes with them. To start things off, Danny's cubing up a big hunk of that ahi, sorry, shibi tuna, to mix up a traditional Hawaiian poke. Just a classic poke with onions and green onions, soy sauce, and sesame oil. Ooh, good smells coming out of here already. This, to me, is the classic. 
I remember as a kid eating it, mm -hmm. and then one day just realizing, we don't need to get it from the store or the restaurant. We could just make this. To me, you start putting avocado and stuff in there. While it's good, I don't, I don't mind it, but it's not it's poke. Like, You're like a purist, man. I just, I think, when I hear poke, I just think of that. I was going to fry some, too. Oh, yeah, I want to see what that's all about. Yeah, let's do that. Something I've heard about but never tried myself is quickly sauteing pokey in a bit of oil or butter. You know, you made too much for a party or whatever. Next day, you're like, I don't know if I want to eat it raw. Sometimes I'll just throw it and fry it up. To be honest, though, I'm already very skeptical before even trying it. Seems almost criminal to ruin that beautiful fish by cooking the hell out of it. Yeah. You shouldn't be allowed to do that. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I get it. Like, if I had something kind of rotten, I'd cook it, too. <laughs> but um, I like it so much better, the, the straight up way. I totally agree with Steve. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely times where, you know, we'd have a, a bowl of poke and um, a huge bowl. And by day, you know, three or four, you're like, oh, I don't want to waste this fish. It's nice. It's just nothing compared to, like, Not the, classic the silky. Poke. Raw poke, yeah. I understand what everybody's saying about the differences here, but I'd still possibly founder on both. I think you need to explain your livestock terminology for people at home. To founder <laughs> would be to eat so much like that a very you arcane. and you can't move <laughs> unless somebody comes around and moves you and sticks a hose up your butt sometimes. <laughs> for real? You'll tip it's over like and die. Your cow will get into the green alfalfa field <laughs> and it'll start eating like rich alfalfa and it'll founder. Yeah. And that's what happens to Cal. Like Should he get presented with too much bogey? I want to do tataki with the ahi and the ono. Tell me what tataki is again. It's like sashimi, but usually the edges of each piece are seared. Yep. And it will have a sauce over it. We're trying two different coatings for our tataki. The first is a traditional Japanese blend of seaweed and sesame seeds, and the other is a spicier mix of smoked paprika and chili powder. While we prep that, Cal gets to working on that pilot fish. What are you gonna do with the pilot fish? Well, nobody's frying anything, so. But I'm just gonna do like the vent, salt and pepper. Yup. You know, my first step with anything brand new, very simple. See what it actually tastes like, and then build from there, right? I'm rooting for him. Me too. Just a real light sear, nothing major. Oh, so you're talking light. Bare, real light, bare. real light, yeah. Once the fish is seared, it goes in the freezer for a few minutes to firm up a bit, so it's easier to slice. While we wait for that, the mahi flays get their turn in the pan, and Kimmy whips up a fresh mango salsa to go with them. I was gonna put mango, lime, cilantro, jalapeno. Danny had some mint growing out there. That looks gorgeous. You did very good. Oh, I didn't screw that one up? No. To be honest with you, this is the first time I haven't screwed that up. When I've tried it at home, I've always overdone it. If you screw that up like I've done in the past, you never get a clean cut. Right. Because this crumbles because it's it too cooked. And then the inside's fine, but then everything falls off because it's like flaky fish. It's just very disheartening. It also helps to have a really sharp knife. Oh, look at that. Little flower on little there. Little flower. You want to sauce that up? Yep. The final step is the task of topping each slice with a sauce made from lemon and lime juices, soy and hot sauces, ginger, scallion, cilantro, and crispy garlic. You guys might want to go to the bowling alley or something for a while, because this is going to slow. You know, it's a labor of love, but think of it as therapeutic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Right? Oh my huh? gosh, everything's beautiful. I want to try the pilot fish. Oh, yeah, I was waiting for the pilot fish. Yeah. <laughs> Diving in. Yeah, that's cooked. Like, that looks perfect. beautiful. Oh, that was very nice of you, Stephen. Oh, that is very delicious. Is it? Mm-hmm. It's oily, right? It, has that, it glistens like sable fish. It does. Mm-hmm. Mm. Very, very good little fish. Yeah. Mm. I like the oil content. You might have, like, state record pilot fish bars. You know. <laughs> might. Let's get into this. Can we go out of the honor? Yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. Mm. That was good fish. Oh, no, Boy, so that's good. buttery. Yeah. That's probably one of my favorite sashimis. Boy, so that's good. good. Let's get into this bad boy. Look at that color. You're cooking such a small percentage of it, but it changes the whole package. 
Yeah, that's true, right? The, just the little cooked edge. It does. Changes the whole package. Yeah. Simple steps, but important, right? So they, they take a little time. Like, a lot more time than sashimi. Right. It looks so similar, but it's like, it really is all those little details that make it like a world of a different experience. Mm. You gonna try that mahi? Mm-hmm. That's mm -hmm. good. Nice cook on that. So. Oh, beautiful. You gave them my all. This is the kind of fish for people who don't like fish go, I like it, but I don't like fish. Yeah. yeah. I know we don't exactly. like fish, but I like that. Yeah, there's no you know fishiness I mean? to it, right? No, it's just like really like halibut, blank slate. Mm. It's so forgiving. Like if you're making mm -hmm. fish tacos or something like that, you know? No. I got to say, absolutely blew my mind. Exceeded all expectations as far as like just seeing the fish the first mm -hmm. day, let alone getting some. There was definitely some stress level leading into this. I, are we gonna see stuff? Yeah, I was like, you guys are crazy. Yeah. Like, thinking you're gonna come over here, go blue water dive and shoot mahis off the bat. It can be so hit or miss out there, and the fact that every day was just hit after hit, I mean. It's good action. Amazing. Amazing. It's been a very fun journey to go on. It's kind of like my first new thing in a long, 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 long time. I've been at it now a while, but you guys have been great. That's awesome. Take us under your wing a little bit, be with you to sort of get a sense of how yeah. not to be nervous about things that don't warrant being nervous about, like how to deal with the sharks, how to deal with 15,000 feet of water underneath you yeah. psychologically. It's all intimidating stuff. And you can psych yourself up, but the best remedy for all those anxieties and apprehensions is just be with people who are calm and then you like feed on that. And so yeah. it's been like a very educational crash course to awesome. be like privileged to get in the water with people whose experiences you guys. But you guys also like do your due diligence mm -hmm. in between the time that we're together. It's cool to see how you guys kind of kept working at it before coming back. You know, so we weren't starting from zero or even from where we left off. We were starting from like a whole nother playing field. Yeah, you have your own behavior too that's, that's calming. So it's nice to know that you have people like that. I feel comfortable taking you out there and there's not too many people that I feel comfortable doing that with. Oh, it's good. It's been a great time. Very fun, very special. Thanks again.